Today, I want to update you on the next stage of this momentous medical initiative. It's called Operation Warp Speed. That means big and it means fast. A massive scientific, industrial, and logistical endeavor, unlike anything our country has seen since the Manhattan Project. You really could say that nobody's seen anything like we're doing, whether it's ventilators or testing. Nobody's seen anything like we're doing now within our country since the Second World War. Incredible. Its objective is to finish developing and then to manufacture and distribute a proven coronavirus vaccine as fast as possible. Again, we'd love to see if we could do it prior to the end of the year. We think we're going to have some very good results coming out very quickly. In addition, it will continue accelerating the development of diagnostics and breakthrough therapies. The Great National Project will bring together the best of American industry and innovation, the full resources of the United States government, and the excellence and precision of the United States military. We have the military totally involved. We're also working very strongly with other countries who are also uh, have some great great scientists, doctors, and we're all working very closely together, and they're viewing us as the leader, and we are uh, — the relationship with other countries on solving this problem has been uh, incredible. To date, Operation Warp Speed has brought together all of the experts across the federal government from places like the NIH, CDC, FDA, and many other agencies. This historic partnership will now bring together the full resources of the Department of Health and Human Services with the Department of Defense. And we know what that means. That means the full power and strength of military, the military. And that really talking about the logistics. If we get it, when we get it, that means the logistics, getting it out so that everybody can take it. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep Now, all of Russia, now, now, all of Russia, uh, by the way, the nation, our nation's top infectious disease expert, Dr. Anthony Fauci, is seriously doubting the safety of a Russian coronavirus vaccine. Listen. Having a vaccine, Deborah, and proving that a vaccine is safe and effective are two different things. We have half a dozen or more vaccines. So if we wanted to take the chance of hurting a lot of people or giving them something that doesn't work, we could start doing this, you know, next week if we wanted to. But that's not the way it works. Russian President Vladimir Putin claimed yesterday his country had become the first to develop an, a usable vaccine for the coronavirus without conducting a phase three trial, which involves testing the drug on patients to assess efficacy and side effects. Full-scale production of the vaccine is expected to begin next month. Good right. luck, Russia. Good luck, Russia. I saw this great, not to make a light of this, uh, but I saw this great meme um, showing just a picture of vodka and saying, here goes the new vaccine up for Russia. <laughs> oh my gosh, which, which, which vodka? Not, yeah, yeah. Great point, yeah, yeah. Totally true. Which one, which one? Is it Kettle One, is it Belvedere? It Stoli? would obviously be a Russian vodka, so we oh, have to pick true. from the delicious Smirnoff options. <laughs> exactly. I was getting there next. It may not be a Cold War arms race, but Russia and the West are clearly in a race to get an effective COVID vaccine into the arms of people around the world. Russia calls its vaccine Sputnik V for vaccine, a not-so-subtle reference to its first victory in the early space race. The Kremlin insists its vaccine is safe and mass distribution will begin in October for the Russian population. Vladimir Putin's own daughter has reportedly received the vaccine, developing the virus's antibodies. But Russia has not yet published any of its scientific data and has not begun critical phase three human trials. U.S. experts, including Dr. Anthony Fauci, are skeptical. I hope that the Russians have actually definitively proven that the vaccine is safe and effective. I seriously doubt that they've done that. Dr. Michelle McMurray-Heath represents America's biotech drug makers. 
there's been a lot of skepticism that maybe the Russians didn't do their due diligence on this vaccine attempt. Well, the skepticism is warranted at this point. We really don't know what it is they're testing, what it is they've seen. And at this point, it's really purely based upon their word. And that's not typically the way we reach scientific conclusions. Meanwhile, the White House has announced yet another major deal with the drug maker. This one, a one and a half billion dollar deal with Moderna for 100 million doses of its experimental vaccine. We're on track to rapidly produce 100 million doses as soon as the vaccine is approved and up to 500 million shortly thereafter. Worldwide, 25 vaccines are now in human trials. Among the leading contenders, Moderna, J&J, &J, Pfizer, AstraZeneca, Inovio, and Novavax. And multiple vaccines will likely be needed. Some may work better in the elderly. Some with African-Americans or people of Hispanic ethnicity. Who knows, some better in children. We might be able to target these vaccines to be used in those different populations. So, so Tom, we've heard about the safety concerns regarding this vaccine in Russia. What other risks does it carry? Well, listen, there's great concern that because Russia seems to be rushing through this process and not going through the appropriate protocols, that that will undermine confidence in all vaccines worldwide. But the American FDA, the Europeans are all insisting that they will not compromise their vaccine standards when it goes through the entire testing process. And Dr. Schaffner, you saw there at the end with Vanderbilt, <laughs> saying that he was given a personal assurance by the FDA commissioner that under no circumstances will the FDA compromise its protocols in ensuring the vaccine is safe. Tom Costello for us there in Washington. Tom, thank you, sir. People on Instagram are making huge money from their posts, and it seems to be a big secret that most normal people don't know about. Infectious disease and immunology specialist, Dr. Pervy Parikh joins us now. Uh, doctor, good morning. Hi, good morning. How are you? Uh, I, I am doing well. Thank you. Hope you are too. So we've been talking a lot about the, the challenges and problems with testing. Uh, please tell us that the vaccine development process is going much better. Uh, you know, this is an unprecedented time, as everyone always says, because we're developing a vaccine at a much faster speed than ever before. So we're trying to develop something in months, which normally takes years. That being said, however, we are still following all of the phases, all of the appropriate safety checks. So, so far, phase one and two have shown very promising data from multiple companies. And now uh, multiple companies in the U.S. are moving to phase three, which is kind of that last step before they can apply for FDA approval. Yeah, Vladimir Putin and Russia seem to think that phase three, uh, m maybe not so important. Uh, explain, uh, if you will, why phase three is important and how important is it in a time like this to share the data from these trials to increase the likelihood that people actually take the vaccine? Right, phase three is extremely important because this is the step where we test it very widely. 30,000 people are tested, all the high risk groups are tested, elderly, healthcare workers, um, those with health disparities. Um, those are the populations we wanna make sure that it definitely works in. Um, and then sharing data, of course, is paramount, right? Because we want to know that it works. We wanna know it's effective. We wanna know uh, that it's safe, which is key. So this is actually the most important phase because when you have large scale testing, usually phase one and two is usually less than 100 people at that. With 30,000 people, we can get real strong data of how safe this is, how effective this is. And if there's any hiccups, it's gonna cause a lot of vaccine suspicion, which we don't need, because that will be another roadblock in us uh, achieving herd immunity if people are reluctant to take the vaccine. Yeah, speaking of that, Dr. Parikh, I mean, so often we hear the phrase during your, the course of your talking to your friends or relatives or anybody else, when there's a vaccine, I'll go back to the office. Right. When there's a vaccine, I'll send my kids back to school. When there's a vaccine, I'll start going out again to restaurants and bars inside. <coughs> but when there's a vaccine and when it's available to me and when it's available to a lot of people and when we get to what you were just talking about in terms of herd immunity are two different things, aren't they? So. What's the actual expectation for when it's available and people can take it and we can really get back to normal? 
Right. So, you know, with the most optimistic thinking, we're hoping uh, vaccines are approved by the end of the year. Now, that being said, it might not be available for people to readily get like the flu shot until even uh, summer or spring of 2021 or even later. You know, this is the first time probably in a long time where the entire world is clamoring for the same supply of a vaccine. Um, and that being said, I don't know if people understand vaccine immunology, but if I get a shot today, it's not going to be protective tomorrow. It takes a couple weeks at least for your own immune system to react to it and build those antibodies, build those T cell responses. So people still, I think, will have to be realistic about their expectations. Um, Dr. Parikh, a, a couple of questions here. One is, you know, you mentioned that it's going to take a couple of weeks before the vaccine is actually working in, in people's bodies. But also, do you have a sense of how frequently people are going to need to get vaccines for that to remain effective? Is this going to be a, a one, one time a year thing uh, similar to the flu shot? And also, I know you're testing different types of vaccines. Is each vaccine going to have a very different protocol? Or do you think there'll be a similarity, which will make it easier for consumers to understand? Right. I mean, that, those are all excellent questions. And the length of vaccine immunity is actually the million dollar question, if you will, because we have great data um, from Moderna, Pfizer, as well as Oxford, AstraZeneca, that the vaccines are working. Um, there's good antibody responses. Oxford's vaccine is even showing good antibody and T cell responses. But the question is, how long will this last? And the short answer is we don't know. We're in the process of learning about it um, just as the rest of the world is. So that will be very interesting to know how frequently the vaccine is needed because that will affect the supply around the world, right? A vaccine needed once a year versus every five years is very, very different. The other thing people don't realize that a lot of these vaccines are multiple doses. So most of the um, ones that are currently being tested, Moderna, Pfizer, they're two doses. Um, AstraZeneca, Oxford, um, the protocol is still being worked out, but likely that one will also be two doses. So again, um, it's not like a one shot and done deal, you know. So even just for the initial immunity, most of these vaccines, you need at least um, two doses. <clears throat> All right. Shalom. Call all you have by assuming you have a shot by assuming we're cockle dash double on the possible that's a great millstone rule well peace and salutations to you, brother. Hopefully, like that, there pushing is true. Uh, as you see, those uh, the, from those opening videos, um, they have started well. They uh, the US and UK say that they're close. Uh, Russia says that they have a vaccine already that they're uh, testing or they skipping phase three or, you know, just whatever they said. But uh, this video is going to be Operation Warp Speed. And so uh, I just want to put this out there that if you notice, they do, they have so many talks of a vaccine, but they're not saying any, you know, is they they let's the first let's get the definition of vaccine. So this is a uh, the free dictionary dot com, and I look at the word vaccine. Uh, it says a preparation of a weakened or killed pathogen, such as a bacterium or virus, or of a portion of the pathogen structure that is administered to prevent or treat infection by the pathogen that. And that functions by stimulating the production of an immune response. <clears throat> now, uh, the second definition is a preparation from the cowpox virus that protects against smallpox when administered to an individual. And that's actually where, uh, where the origin of vaccines came from, uh, the smallpox, them uh, taking the part of the cowpox virus or a different strand of cowpox virus and injecting it, injecting it into the people in order to help prevent smallpox. Now, now that's what, so a vaccine is taking the literal disease or virus and putting, and putting a supposedly dead cell of the virus and putting it into you. 
Now, if you notice, everyone is talking about vaccine, 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 vaccine. Now, let's look up the word cure. Since there's so much talk about a vaccine, so it's like everybody wants so bad to put the virus inside of you, which is honestly that's fucking retarded. It's really stupid. All right, but uh, this this definition for cure is just a drug or course of medical treatment used to restore health, restoration of health. Recovery from disease, something that corrects or relieves a harmful or disturbing situation. Uh, yeah, but so a cure would be more important than a vaccine, than putting the dead, supposedly dead virus cells into your body in order to activate your immune system to fight it off. The most I created our bodies with an immune system, with a, a particular defense mechanism for these particular diseases and virus and viruses that, you know, that come upon us. So that's why that's, that's why that's fucking stupid. It's like, once again, Esau has a gun pop, God complex to where they want to circumvent any and everything that the Most High created. Don't, don't, go, don't go and use it the way he created it, but, you know, do it his own way. But so I want to catch a few scriptures on here, too. This is Isaiah chapter 10, verse 1. Woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees. And they're talking about possibly making the vaccine mandatory for everyone to get. That's an unrighteous decree, because once again, even just speaking on this note, what if I don't want you just injecting the doggone virus into my into my body? And they call it herd immunity, which is, is a herd that were for like sheep, you know, like a, a herd of cattle or a herd of sheep, basically a large multitude of them. And that, that's all it, that's all it's going back to. Uh, woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees and that write grievousnesses, which they have prescribed. And that's exactly what they do. They decree unrighteous decrees, which be making this vaccine mandatory. Um, you know, these setting up all these checkpoints. Um, I, earlier, one, one of the brothers brought out about the COVID pass to make sure that uh, a particular electronic pass to make sure that you have been vaccinated with the COVID-19 vaccination. You know, just, just stupid stuff like that. All right. Uh, let me get this. Here. All right. This is Ecclesiasticus or Sirach chapter 38, verse 4. It says, The Lord hath created medicines out of the earth. And he that is wise will not abhor them. Right. So the herbs are the things that we need to help our body get over these diseases and these viruses. Is due to the herbs of the earth. And see, that's why they set up the whole pharmaceutical industry because pharma pharmacy goes back to that Greek word pharmakia or pharmakia, which means witchcraft. So all that, you know, that's that's why everybody is on all these not everybody, but you know, that's why most of the world is on these prescription pills, you know, popping all these pills, especially when, you know, for the elderly, they have the the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday pill. You know, PO trays, you know, they just keep keeping everybody doped up on pills, uh, you know, and then and then also with these, uh, you know, requiring your, your children to get vaccinated before they go to school, you know, just that's an unrighteous decree, different things like that. So and then that's the other thing, too. So they they may not physically say, hey. Where you have you it's mandatory you get this uh coronavirus or COVID nineteen vaccination, but what they will do is shut you out 
meaning, hey, you can't go here. You can't travel. You know, you can't travel out of your city. You can't travel out of your state. Uh, what didn't it say uh, in uh, Second Ed chapter 15? Uh, Man shall desire to go to a city and shall not be able. You know, Second Ed, uh, fifth chapter 15. You know, so they, they, they'll do things like that. You can't travel. Uh, you can't go out of your city. You can't go out of your state. You can't go to the grocery store unless you've been vaccinated. You know, you can't, you know, just do simple things uh, of life. That's how that's how they'll do it. If they if they don't make it physically say, hey, it's mandatory, you get it. They'll just shut you out. Uh, let's see. I want to get. It's going to be uh, Ecclesiastes of Sirach chapter 14. So the verse 5. So this is why we can't, we constantly telling you, Jakes, do not trust these people. Do not trust in this kingdom. Do not trust in this society. Do not trust in them. You know, because they're, they're going <laughs> to, everything that they do is opposite or opposing to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. Every single thing that they do. Uh, this is uh, Ecclesiastes and Sirach chapter 14, starting at verse 5. He that is evil to himself, to whom will he be good? Think about it. They poison the air, you know, GMO food, poison the water, you know, uh, chemtrails in the air. Uh, all you know, vaccinating your own people. You know they they do all this stuff to their own. They they killing themselves. So do you really think that they really care about you, Jake's? Uh, there verse six. There is none worse than he that envieth himself, and this is a recompense of his wickedness. And verse seven. And he that doeth good, he doeth it unwillingly. And at the last, he will declare his wickedness, and <laughs> that's why they got you, Jakes, on the forefront, on the forefront of trying to get this vaccine, because they saying, oh, we're gonna get the, you know, the the so called black people and Latino and Native American people, you know, they're they're gonna be one of the first ones to, you know, get the vaccine. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you get you literally get the ass end or the tail end of everything in this kingdom, you know, from from the uh, from the educational system to the worst jobs to the worst food to everything. And now they want to put you on the front line because they 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 want to save your life. They want to make sure you save, you know, that you don't die from coronavirus. Man, get out of here, man. See, that, that's what I'm talking about. You cannot trust this man's wickedness. Yeah, all right? Because this is how they come. This is going to be Psalms chapter 55. Verse 21. It says... The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. And that's how he gets you. You know, that's exactly how he gets you. They talk about, oh, well, you know, especially well, all right, with, this, uh, with this whole election thing. If you vote for me, you know, we'll do this, we'll do that. We'll, you know, all, all these different promises they make. And you jakes go out and do the same thing every four years or every all that voting shit. You know, you, you, you trusting in Esau's society. You know, you trusting in him to help you when he doesn't care about you. Honestly, common sense to tell you, why would a people that's ruling over you want to bring you up and make you equal unto them? That's stupid. That's really stupid when you think about it. If I'm if I'm ruling over a nation of people, and why would I why would I want to make that nation of people equal unto me? That's retarded. But hey, I digress. Uh, uh this is the last one I want to get here. Uh, Ecclesiastes, uh, Sirach chapter 12, 
Okay, I'm going to start at verse 10. Here it is. It says, Never trust thine enemy, for like as iron rusteth, so is his wickedness. And Jake, Jake's man, if, if you just read the scriptures, the scriptures tell you how to deal and maneuver through this life and through this kingdom. You know, you wouldn't you wouldn't be out there trying to vote for for Esau. You know, you wouldn't be trying you wouldn't be trying to be a part of this kingdom if you didn't trust your enemy. Verse 11, though he humble himself and go crouching, yet take good heed and beware of him. And thou shalt be unto him as if thou hast wiped a looking glass and thou shalt know that his rust hath not been altogether wiped away. <laughs> so, <laughs> so think about when you're washing dishes, say you're washing a glass and you got a little rust in your glass and uh, you, you know, you wipe it, you know, you wash it, wipe all the water off and you'll get it clean and that rust still there. See, that's all it's talking about. The, the, you trust the enemy, man, his, his wickedness is going to continuously be there. His wickedness ain't going nowhere. <laughs> all right. But uh, that, that's all I wanted to get. That's all I wanted to put out there you know this this operation war speed you know they they are talking about having this virus by october they said i mean not so lucky not the virus but uh this vaccine by october they said i mean uh they you know they they trying to get it you know pushed out there before the end of the year you know trying to do all these different trials and tests and that's the other thing you jakes please don't don't go out there you don't go out there being a guinea pig and being a test a test dummy for these damn vaccines that's stupid all right but just want to put that information out there you know uh russia say they have a uh coronavirus vaccine so uh operation warp speed for babylon to, for babylon and when i say or when i say babylon i'm talking about the whole b system just esau's kingdom the, which is encompasses the entire planet not you know babylon the great is america but the, the whole b system is encompassing the whole planet you know every everyone's linked into it so uh uh hope you're edified shalom